I'm thinking about what I want to what do I want to talk about, and it's called systems we love, and I'm trying to tie this into something. And I remember I grew up on a farm, and so I'd come home and I'd sit there and I'd look up at the sky, at the stars, and I go, "That's cool. I want to go there someday. How do we do this? This would be fun to think about." Um, and you know, so I tie this back to farming because one of the things. Well, anyway. If you're going to farm, you need some equipment. Well, if you're going to, do you want to, if you have some equipment and you want to farm on Mars, do you want to call Earth for replacement parts? Now, I have a, a couple of things. So I know a lot about soybeans, which actually this is some soybeans, and corn and silicon. And there's something really, well, here's some silicon. Um, and there's something really important about that. Whoops. One of them is self-replicating. Because if I plant one of these in uh, August or something, I'll have about 30 of them. And so I can keep making more. Well, corn, I have to buy hybrid corn seed, and that costs a little bit of money. And, but corn actually makes something else. But if I want to make one of these, and I want to change it, and it's not some sort of thing that hates me because I just found the bugs in the hardware, um, I have to have a couple billion dollars for a fab. So I think about, okay, how do I fix my farm equipment? Well, I have to be able to make, well, let's go to the next one. How do I get a self-replicating thing? And so I saw the RepRap, uh, which is this thing, which is a 3D printer. And the 3D printer uses PLA, one type, it's polylactic acid, which is actually made from corn um, to print the little white plastic things you see here. And you know, the other parts, there's machine stuff, so I can machine stuff, and I could maybe make a motor. I actually made a motor in, once. But this stuff down here, there's some silicon. So you can't print the silicon to make the printer. Um, and, and then if my tractor has a, has a chip in it, and actually any tractor built in the last 10 years will not run without something like this. So if my tractor breaks, how do I fix it? And if we're going to have self-replicating robots on the moon or Mars, we have to figure out how to make silicon without spending 30 million. We still need a processor. Both the tractor and the printer need a processor. I don't have 30 million to buy a fab. This is actually a picture of the fab in Bloomington, Minnesota that was sold for 30 million. So if anybody knows who Skywater Technology is, come find me because I want to find out. Can we use your fab for something? Do you have some spare capacity? The other way to look at it is maybe instead of buying a fab or using somebody else's fab. Maybe we can make our own fab. And this is a little um, ultraviolet laser direct right system. I think all these things have links in them, if you go find the, the document, um, that will do like, I think, one micron uh, photo resist etching. So it's kind of a micro 3D printer. Or actually, it's a micro 2D printer, but you can do multiple layers. And you can do things that start looking like maybe we could make a processor that'll run at 2 megahertz. But a 2 megahertz processor is better than no processor. <laughs> but it's still all code. So if you code it, will somebody fab it? And there are two places. Um, there's one that I've ran into a couple of years ago when I got excited about this. It's called eFabless, and they're trying to do, to make silicon accessible to everybody again. Uh, there's another one called MOSIS, which stands for metal oxide semiconductor or something or another, that was actually in use when I was in college. So I took an electrical engineering class and we're like laying out transistors. And, and if you took a different class, which I never actually took, unfortunately, because I got sucked into software, um, was you could design, lay out some transistors with some really expensive tools, and I'll get to that in a second. And then you could, they would send it to this MOSIS Thing and you'd get back some silicon, and maybe you could see how it blows up when you apply power wrong. Um, which is the other problem with silicon, is you turn the power on and sometimes it, it, it blows up. Um, so, that, so there's, which, which is an interesting thing, it's, it's like the thing about knitting, it's, um, it's like there's all this hugely condensed stuff where you assume that everybody that's designing silicon has had four years of electrical engineering. Um, and I think we, we need to do the same thing. We need to make it, we need verbose mode 
for silicon VLSI tools. So the first one is Verilog, and then there's VHDL, and then there's something called System C. And so what's the new one? What's the verbose mode for designing hardware? Uh, I don't know. The, wh one of the things about sequential is I've met sequential thinkers and they don't know hardware. They, they, it's, and then you give, and then I meet hardware people. Because when you're doing electrical engineering on hardware, everything happens at the same time. It's all concurrent. And, and the, really the challenge is, is how to, you're really trying to give an abstraction or you're trying to build something on unreliable probabilistic silicon that gives you a sequential step-by-step -step flow. And so I hear talking about timers, it's like, well, let's put the timers in hardware. And then we can have deterministic whatever. But at any rate, the serious language people use for uh, hardware mostly is called Verilog. Um, and then there's this group place called opencores.org that has a lot of interesting open hardware. Now some tools. Uh, these are a list of some of the open source tools that you can actually lay out hardware with. And this picture is a, uh, it's called the Open MSP430. And so this is all wires. And then there's transistors under, buried underneath there somewhere. Uh, this other thing here is a tool called KiCad, which is a PCB layout tool. Because once you have your silicon and somebody puts it in a package for you, you need to put it, you need to connect it to something else. You need to connect it to power. You need to connect it to a signal. You need to, and that's what usually what's called a printed circuit board. Um, and so you can use KiCad, which actually has this really nice looking 3D visualization so you can see what your circuit board is going to look like. And you can get this. It's part of the Debian archive. It's on my freaking laptop. Um, and so, so, you know, the other ones, these other ones here are, there's pieces, or all the pieces are there, but I haven't figured out how to put them all together yet, and then where do I go to make the silicon? But there's, there's, I also wanted to touch on the business, because I wanted to, you know, some of this is let's do silicon for fun, not because we're getting paid for it, but because it's fun. But for that to happen, there has to be some kind of a business that other people can build us the parts that we can use to do fun things with, like this, which is a beagle bone, um, or there's the Raspberry Pi, and then there's sort of the original open source hardware thing that got a lot of people excited, which was the Arduino. Now this one is the really interesting one, because it's called the, the High Five Freedom Everywhere. This tiny, you barely even see the chip. That chip, you can download the source code for that chip. And then you can download, you know, you can put that, that's on an Arduino form factor board. So we're almost at the point where you can get a piece, something like this, that someday I'm going to build one of these, something that has all the tools. I'll turn, plug the power on, plug it in, I'll turn it on, and it'll come up and it'll have every tool I need to modify the layout of the processor that I'm running on. So if I want to put timers in hardware, I can go do that. And then I'll have to find somebody to make it. But we're probably a year and a half out from this. And I guess I wanted to throw in, you know, Seven Elements is sort of my consulting company where I try to do this stuff. But Crowd Supply is another one that's very interesting because they do, they have an entire open hardware category. So they have a process by which you can say, I have this cool thing I want to make, and you can go get it crowdfunded. I'm hoping someday somebody's going to build a full, what I call Debian software, some, something with, I call it the cube is the best, is, is going to be the, the name I use, is something that has under the Debian free software guidelines, all the tools and all the software and all the designs to recreate itself. And then, then I don't know what's going to happen because we're going to have self-replicating robots and that's going to be strange. So we better talk nice to them. <laughs> but then there's this other thing. Then, then maybe we can build some rockets. But this thing, this picture here, this is a processor from a company that's got bought by somebody else. But the original company was Geisler Aeroflex. You can download the source code for this processor. It's under a GPL license. And so if you follow those directions, you'll get 
a tarball, you can extract the tarball, and then you can type make. But it expects some tools that we don't have right now. So we take all those tools I listed earlier and we make this compile. We have something very interesting. Um, so maybe if, if I summarize all this, if I get all this stuff, well, then I can build a tractor and I can get parts from my tractor and then maybe if we can do all that, I think building rockets is easy. <laughs> well, thank you.